Cat here for Loop TV and we're at the British Music Experience at the O2 Arena in London, a permanent exhibition which has been set up to celebrate and document 60 years of incredible music and we're lucky enough today to get a chance to talk to John Leckie who's here giving a masterclass. Now the British Music Experience, quite an exciting project. Um, tell us a bit about your involvement. Um, well, I, I've uh, known uh, Paul here, who, who set the whole exhibition up here. I've known him for a few years, and he's asked me to come along and, uh, you know, meet some people and uh, do a little masterclass question and answer thing and see the exhibition, which is fantastic. It is an incredible exhibition indeed. Now, this isn't the first time that you've sort of imparted knowledge or got involved in sort of initiatives that are education as well as, well as musical. I believe you did something a few years ago with the British Council and went out to, and sort of found other bands. Tell us a bit about that. That's right, yeah. Um, well, the British Council contacted me and asked me to uh, go out to India and work with some Indian rock bands, specifically like rock bands, you know. And so, and they they didn't have they didn't know of any. So I did a lot of research and things, and went out to India, went to Delhi and Bangalore and Mumbai, and auditioned about 36 different bands, and uh, worked with and chose four of them that I worked with. And uh, it's I mean, of course it was the first time I've been in India, and it was uh, overwhelming. You know, there's so many people, and we were just in Mumbai, and um, and it was interesting because you know the brief was to uh, you to find rock bands, and of course in India everything is possible, everything and anything is there. And um, most of the bands, most of the 36 bands I saw, saw, probably 25 of them were were metal bands, you know, were full on death metal, you know, very tough kind of, uh, you know, with the vocals and everything. Um, and, you know, I'm not really a metal fan, I'm not really a metal producer. And, um, but I did, ch I did find four bands there. Um, Adveta um, was one band who was kind of fusion with an English, they were a bit like Crosby, Stills and Nash with Indian singing because they had like acoustic guitars, like West Coast kind of harmonies and um, with an Indian singer, with a, an Indian classical singer, they had a Sarangi, which is like a Indian bowed violin. Uh, electric guitar, keyboards and everything, so they were quite interesting. Um, there was a band called Medusa who were like um, a g keyboard kind of, not, not hip-hop, but singing, you know, singing but electron, electronic beats kind of thing. Um, there was a great band called Swaratma from Bangalore who were a real kind of festival band with uh, tabla, drums, um, sang in Karnataka, didn't actually sing in English. Uh, very enjoyable they were and a band called um, Indigo Children who you would think come from if you saw them and heard them you think they come from Camden or something because <laughs> you know they were just like a, a very proficient um, indie rock band really and so yeah I did this this work for the British Council and the bands all came over here and toured actually they the, the four bands they did the great escape festival in Brighton right. which it must have been an amazing experience for you and of course for them as it, well it was great to see them in, in in England yeah playing and all the gigs were packed like sold out and everyone was you know at a great time and it was it, you know it was really good now your your skills are well-known industry-wide and you've worked on basically seminal album albums and and works that are probably in every audiophiles collection everywhere a lot of those were debut albums i mean obviously the stone roses was a debut album moving th through to sort of rodrigo y gabriela do you think it's a different thing working on an artist's debut album and that sort of developing what becomes their sound for the future mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite an exciting thing, actually, working, working on their first album, because usually it's the songs that they've probably spent five years writing and honing down and, you know, choosing their best thing. And the bands themselves are always very excited about being in the studio, doing their first record. And um, um, I don't actually choose to do first albums, but it seems to be what I get picked for or what they, they, they like me to do. And... Um, you know, it's it's always really exciting, and you never quite know what's going to happen, and you can kind of 
mold their sound make them you know make something special and, of and this is the thing to be there at the beginning of a sort of muse the, for that first yeah. album which then went platinum and sort of exploded their career yeah. must be quite an incredible experience for yourself as a producer as well as for them having the opportunity to work with somebody who's who's done so much yeah yeah that's right yeah with muse it was their first record they've been in the studio a few times before but um you know they were they were really excited and it's really you know it's kind of it's like your whole life depends on it you know with, with, with those bands you know it's what they've kind of spent everything up to that moment working for and um you know you often find that they go off and do other things but you know they, 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 their favorite memories usually are of those those first sessions you know in the studio You've also sort of challenged yourself in other ways. I mean, you went out and did an album with Baba Mal in Senegal, which I believe you, no electricity, just plugged into an old generator. How's that slightly more guerrilla <laughs> techniques in recording? Well, that's very exciting, yeah, as well, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah Baba Mal, of course, it, w it was an honour to, you know, be asked to work with him. And I went out to Senegal. I'd never really been to Africa before. Well, actually, I had. I've been to Nigeria. Did you know what you were letting yourself in for before you arrived? Or was it you sort of got there and it was like, oh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't, I didn't know what I was letting myself in for, really. Um, but we looked for studios in Dakar. You know, we, he'd, he'd done many albums before in America and different places and, and things. And... You know, I, what I was interested in was his live band, his touring band, the, you know, the local musicians that he played with. And um, we saw some studios in Dakar, which, you know, were okay. And, and then one evening they said, oh, let's go out to um, Tubab Diallo, which is a place about 100 miles south of uh, Dakar, out in, out in the country kind of thing. And of course in Africa, well, at the time it was like early September so it's still quite hot so you find most things happen in the evening you know like not much happens in the day or the afternoon and when it cools down that's when all the action sort of happens so you know about midnight we drove off to this place and we got there and it was really cool and was under the stars and I said hey you know and he had space he had buildings and things it was just like a compound sand dirt floors you know and I said, hey, we should do the record here. And he's like, oh, you can't do that. I said, well, yes, you can. You know, we can bring the equipment in and everything, which we did. We spent three weeks and we flew all the equipment in from, from England and um, just got, had these little generators, little petrol generators. You put half a gallon of petrol in and it'd run for a, a day, you know, and did the whole recording there. And, um, you know, the worst thing, I think, was the insects, actually, because there was no glass in these windows and there's no doors, you know, it was just like concrete kind of buildings. Um, and so, you know, we, uh, as, soon as, as soon as it got dark and we turned the lights on, all the insects would come and in the morning we'd have to sweep up all the, all the insects, these big uh, locusts and things. <laughs> but you get used to it. You know, at first it's a bit of a shock, but you just get used to it great big things landing on your shoulder and stuff. And in, the, in that sort of situation, do you find that that almost adds to the recording that you come out with at the end, whether it be the insects and the crickets yeah, and the sort of hum of the generators yeah. is all part of that piece? Yeah, yeah that's, that's what kind of creates the atmosphere of the recording. And, you know, that, that little bit of magic you kind of capture and the, um, the the musicians get off on that really you know the musicians feel comfortable and you know I think when you listen to the record it is a bit like uh, a picture of Africa you know it's almost visual you know you're listening to something and you can picture where, where we recorded it you know. 